and welcome to the Unlucky Frog Gaming Podcast. I am your host, Ben Porter, and I'm joined by Charlotte Porter. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm good. Uh, Josh is on a little bit of a hiatus at the moment, so... Yeah, yeah, as you may have already noticed, so we're we're changing things up a little bit, but he will be back. Yep, he's You're not he's soon. he's not gone for good. So, um, what have we been up to over the past week or so, Charlotte? Well, what have we been up to? I know that you had a big game the other night. What were you playing the other night? Well, I I had the penultimate game ah, of our of Age of Sigmar Firestorm campaign. But um, I was in Games Workshop, uh, the Glasgow, or it's Warhammer Glasgow yep, now actually, Warhammer. on uh, well, last Saturday, uh, and they they had a little uh, narrative campaign day, okay. which was quite good, and uh, they also had the second stage of the Malign Portents uh, painting competition. Um, there were two entries. Right. Uh, it was me and Scott who's been on the podcast oh, before. Yeah. Yep. And I won. Okay. Um, and although although there was only two of us in the competition, it, it still felt like a bit of a an bit achievement. A competition, yeah. No, well, it, it felt like an <laughs> achievement because was, Scott's a quite an accomplished yeah, painter. He's a very good painter. Um, so to to have uh, have gone up against him and uh, and won uh, is still an achievement. Uh, so. And the certificates in the post, I believe. Yeah, I think so. It's I hope so. <laughs> I it's not so. arrived yet. No, it hasn't. But I, I have, I've been assured by by Steve that um, mm. it will be with me at some point. Good. So after the painting competition, there was a tournament. Is that right? No, the painting competition was after ah, okay. the tournament. Okay. So yeah, completely, completely the wrong way around. Completely the wrong way around. That's yeah. right. <laughs> but um, and it wasn't a tournament. It was a campaign. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, there's a big difference there. I just obviously have no idea what's going on. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> no, 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 that, no. It's because a tournament. Um, it's competitive. It, it, it's a lot more competitive, yeah, yeah. whereas um, a narrative campaign there's an emphasis firmly on yeah. the story, and and what Steve had done, which was really cool, was at the at the end of each round, um, all of the winners got to vote on a narrative choice. Okay. Um, so it was kind of like a mini version of what they're doing with the Malign Portents yes. campaign yeah. at the moment. Um, uh, so so that was quite interesting, um, and you, 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 it worked in such a way where you could end up making a choice that didn't work in your faction's favour, right? Because you you haven't to sort of read between the the lines. The choices were kept quite vague, like there was one. It was. Um, uh, an old man approaches you and says that he has some magic seeds. <laughs> and what, what what did you do? So you had the you had the you had the choice of uh, following the man okay. uh, and heeding his advice. You, you had the choice to, to just kill him. That would be my that uh, and be take my. the seeds. <laughs> that would be and what you, I did. <laughs> and then you also had the choice to just ignore him. Um, I would have killed and, him, taking the seeds. And you know it's just an old man, but um, Steve revealed yep. what all the the choices were, and in the end, he w- he was a Nurgle gardener okay. in disguise. Okay. okay. So probably a good thing that the seeds didn't get planted. Yeah. But Death won that in the end. Okay. Uh, feels like they're winning everything at the moment, you know. But <laughs> not that you feel uh, no hard done by it or anything. No, but there we go. Yeah. Um, as far as uh. What, you know, while we're on the subject of Games Workshop, uh, Adepticon. Oh yes, of course. Is, is on yeah. uh, full right swing. Now. It's on full right swing now. at the moment. Yeah. Um, Illinois. It's in Illinois. Illinois. I, I, I think it. I think it's Chicago. Ah. Chicago area. Yeah. Um, it's it's one of the big ones for the I'll US. I'll be honest and say I've heard of it. I don't know much about it. Yeah. So Ben and I had a ch- chat this morning. We went through all the stuff. So it looks really interesting. So it's mostly Warhammer, um, no Warhammer, Wargaming it style stuff. It is mostly miniatures. Wargaming and, yep. and mostly um, Warhammer yep. actually. Because um, Games Workshop are actually sponsoring it, they, aren't they? they? Yeah, they never used to. So, yeah. But you know, they they've they've changed their approach to and things. I think it's in a good way years. to approach things. I think so. Yeah. You you do need to support the community. Yeah, definitely. Uh, don't don't know why it's only yeah. over the past couple of years they decided to do that, but it's good. 
you know, yeah. we're just we're just glad that they are doing it. So, exactly. Um, but what was notable about this year's Adepticon was it's the biggest reveal Games Workshop have ever done in one go. Right. Okay. Um, because they. They revealed a new faction for ah, Age of Sigmar. Yes. The Ideneth Deepkin. Who are gorgeous. Sea elves. Absolutely beautiful models. Yeah. Um, they, they're they apparently going to do Plastic Sisters of Battle. Right. I don't play 40k. Apparently that's a big deal. Okay. They've been waiting for them for a long time. So that's 2019. And if that is the case, make sure to let us know. Any listeners yeah, out there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, please confirm. Is that a big deal? Um... They're also doing uh, new Imperial Knights okay. and big mechs yeah. for 40k. Um, they're continuing the Malign Portents storyline for Age yeah. of Sigmar. Um, there's going to be an expansion that revolves all around magic. Yeah. Um, I think the idea being with the early Malign Portents story arc uh, was that there, there's these very vague and cryptic signs that you can interpret and you know subtle weird things happen. Yeah. Whereas this next expansion is like things are really starting to get weird. Yeah. Um, and the, the the model that they showed in the trailer was really bizarre. It's like a big purple ball uh, with loads of bits coming out of it, and then like a skull on it. Okay. So it didn't look like a, a like a like a creature or anything right. per se. But but someone actually um, photo photoshopped um, the Pokemon coughing's <laughs> face onto it. And it it looked perfect. Yeah. But um, yeah, interested to see yeah. what comes of that. So the new the new models though. The the deep kin yes. sea elves. Do you know what they reminded me of? What the Zora out of Legend of Zelda, that sort of style that they've got, that sort of aquatic. I don't know what the Zora oh, right. Ben. Right, so what yeah, so briefly explain to us well, what the Zora I suppose it's more the way that they're painted up and the style of the armour does look very much like the Zora armour in The Legend of Zelda. Now that's that's me said my bit. That's all I need to say. I'm done now. Yeah. I'm I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> loads of people will get that, but um the 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 reference is wasted yes, on me, unfortunately. You but do try though. You I do, do try. try I do try. Um the for anyone that doesn't know, I love Legend of Zelda. I actually came down the aisle to Zelda's Lullaby, didn't I? You did, yeah. It was beautiful. I, I was told it was Zelda's Lullaby. But it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very nice piece of music, but um, that was the extent of yes. my knowledge. Yes. Um, but yeah, the the, the Ideneth Deepkin. Um, so, w- one of the things that they've been doing with a lot of the... Uh, the games workshop armies that they've been really they've been they've been going for like quite strange like very vibrant brightly colored it works really well color schemes i think for this yeah but i mean like remember when they revealed the the iron jaws the new big yeah. beefy orc and they, they gave them all yellow armor sort of neon yeah they were pretty bright weren't they? Yeah, yeah it it was a bit of a weird choice um it's i mean it's not what i would have picked but I feel like they've done, they they've kind of done the same thing with the Ideneth Deepkin. They've picked some pretty weird and wacky colours really for like them. I really like the colours. They're even they're quite zinchy though. They're that sort of purple and blue and all sorts. They're quite psychedelic. Scaly. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I really like that. They're not zinchy. They're order. Zinchy. Get zinchy. your get your filthy chaos hands <gasps> off of our elves. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, for the benefit of those listening. We'll we'll put we'll put a couple of links to yeah. the Warhammer community art, community article where they were revealed, but the the Ideneth Deepkin like so they're they're quite a strange one. Like some of them have got no eyes. Yeah. Uh, did you, I don't know if you saw that. You were saying that quite the freaky looking ra- rank fail guys. The, they? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the 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 battle line yeah. uh, troops. They they kind of like. Do you remember? But what's their what's their their fluff? What's the story behind them? Well, the story behind them is that. Um, because there's lot there's lots of um, sub races within mm. uh, Age of Sigmar. Like although you've got elves, there's all these like offshoots of them. Like recently you had Daughters of Cain, uh, that you know that's Marathi's yeah. elves, uh, and they're all quite uh, like they 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 borrow from Greek mythology. You know they're quite Gorgon like. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, you know, you've got the the sort of nagas, yeah, uh, like the serpent ladies, and then you've got the harpies and all that. So that, but the the Ideneth Deepkin are supposed to be Teclis's okay. elves, and the, from what I've heard, he, he kind of he botched it right. when he created these elves. Okay. So one of the things that's wrong with them is that apparently their souls are always trying to leave their body. Oh. So they have to like steal other people people's souls to sustain them. Okay. This is all hearsay, of course. Yeah. yeah. But um, it does make, it makes them quite sinister. Because there's something in their appearance as well that's quite Lovecrafting. I think the oh, way there is. I, I think so. I think so, but more so for the sort of uh, the you know the sort of Victorian setup that comes along with it. Like you know, with Lovecraft, uh-huh. that's kind of what it reminds me of. That sort of fantastical yeah, I guess it, it sort may, of maybe does it evoke a little bit of that, yeah. you know, especially with the sea beasts that yeah. come with them. But to go going back to the the blind rank and yes. file guys, do you know what they kind of remind me of? Do, do you remember years ago there was that av- advert for soft mints, and there's like it was like you know who hey, Mister Softy, yeah, yeah Mister Softy, like they look like him. <laughs> But with pointy he was a ears. big, big floppy, softy yeah. guy. Look, he? Like no, but see, because they they're yeah. they're almost featureless. Yeah, they look like Mister Soft. But is there maybe something like you know, like the Om? You know the um, is it the Om that 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 salamander? That yeah, it's got no eyes. Got no eyes now because it's been living sort of it's evolved within I, a cave, I, I, so I think, it's not got. I think that's quite possibly uh, what, what what's informed yeah. that um, that design decision is that. Uh, because they're very pale as well, yeah, sort of almost yeah. like uh, troglodytes. Yeah. Uh, so I think the idea is that the they're this uh, you know somewhat depraved, yeah. uh, dark dwelling. Like the Falmer. Of, the Falmer in Skyrim. Yeah. 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 So, so it's quite an interest, in, uh they're not they're not all blind. No. I, I no. noticed, which is weird. Um, some of them still look quite um, majestic. Like there's the there's guy, the cape, w- the cloak oh. that's like a wave. Yeah, that's yeah, very, that, that's a that really was amazing. Model. And then you had um, there's a guy that's riding a sort of um, I, I don't know if you call it a, a Capricorn or a Hippocampus, but it's yeah. like a seahorse type right. creature. And he's got like an eye patch and all that. He, yeah. he, he looks very much um, like he, he wouldn't look out of place in uh, an eighth edition Dark Elf yeah. army, you know. So. It, even though it's this one faction, it looks as though there's all these uh, weird little yeah. sub races within it. Um, but I, I'm really excited uh, to see a bit more of them. I think uh, I don't think I've seen you this excited about Warhammer in a long time. Yeah. So that for me is exciting because okay. you're so you're so passionate about it. So to yeah, it's it's so different from what they've done before. Yeah. But I think my favourite model of the lot. Is the scribe with the octopus oh, on his shoulder? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it, it's so cool because the he, he uses the ink from the octopus to, to write. write, but he's totally engrossed in the scroll. But if you look at the model, the octopus is actually holding out a blade. So I think I think the idea is it's the octopus it's that's like fighting, fighting and protecting him. So it's, I wouldn't mind a a little shoulder octopus, a knife wielding shoulder octopus. Yeah. I think what, yeah. Good that's to what I think. That's what we all aspire to, <laughs> to is to have a knife wielding shoulder yeah. octopus. But um, yeah, so some expo- it, we'd started talking about Adepticon and then got distracted there, didn't we? But no, but that that ties yeah. into Adepticon. Yeah. Um, yeah, ho- hopefully we can get to Adepticon I, one I'd day. Really liked, I was really impressed with the lineup actually. Of oh, it's the, huge! Um, yeah, the exhibitors uh, and the sponsors as well. So. I would love to go and check it out. Yeah, Adepticon's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Has been for a while. and uh, See, I always thought that it was primarily um, like a tournament, but it's no, it's a, it's a pretty big um, like all-around gaming convention. Yeah. A, yeah. You know, a lot of uh, uh, prolific companies uh, come from, I think, all over the world mm-hmm. for Adepticon, actually. It's it's one of the, 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 the big ones in America, certainly. Yeah. Mm, definitely. We'll add it to our list of things to, to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, what else have we been up to well, this week? We've actually started, I suppose, to call it a campaign with your mum. My mum, yes. yes. Um, we've started playing Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Yes, the the Thames murders. The Thames murders, Because yeah. you get different boxes, don't yeah. you? Um, you got me it for Christmas. I did. 
Uh, and this is us only just getting to play it. Yep. We did hold off with playing it because when I told my mum yeah. that I was getting you it, she was like, I really want to play that. Because yeah. my mum my loves all the, see, the detective shows yeah. like Poirot and uh, Sherlock Holmes. Holmes, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure if she... She does watch Miss Marple. I'm not sure if I could your, describe your her Your mum watches a lot of things. Yeah. She likes a good <laughs> She likes a good murder. She does. And She'll you know, never admit that, though. You know She'll what? never admit that. Do you know what? She, like, growing up, she always had a go at me for, like, the games I played. So, you know, like, they're all full of murder and violence. And it's like, mum, are you serious? Your mum's a natural-born conspiracy theorist. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, no, it's the, it's the fact that she would have a go at yeah. me for the entertainment. Yeah. That I enjoyed being violent, and it's like, but you, you, that's warfare. Yeah. Whereas you're Just actually, you know, murder. like, and yeah, like, like, it's like midsummer murders and Poirot and stuff like, like cold that. blooded, yeah. planned, calculated <laughs> murder. Jonathan Creek. Yeah, she's watching that while at the same time having a go at me for like you know double standards playing games like Red Dead Redemption and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Yes. Back to the game. So yeah, so we we started this last Sunday. Yep. And uh, I have to say, I absolutely loved it. I really got into it. Really got into it. Yeah. Um, they give you a map of London, yeah. don't they? So it's and you, the newspaper. Yeah. So you have to try and leads for find leads within it and get, follow up the leads. It really it really pulls you in, doesn't yeah. it? Because well, like, we were I, we, we were at it for about two hours well I had a notebook remember <laughs> and I, I was writing yeah. down the I had like a list of all the people we had to see and they yeah. were like no we, we've not spoken to such and such yeah. yet so let's go there and it's um, it, it uses sort of choose your own adventure mechanics yeah. doesn't yeah. it where it, it tells you to wh- wh- if you want to go and see Lord Ragland yep. go to number such and such yeah. in the book and then uh, it gives you yeah. uh uh, a little of, bit of story, yeah. Um, where you're there's speaking to Raglan, and, stuff in it and then there's well. other little things that you can pick up on yeah. in it, like um, you know, it'll maybe mention that someone has a certain type of cigarette, yeah. or something like that, and and so where where at first you think with the you know that choose your own adventure mechanic, you're like, well, surely that that really constrains the the whole. Uh, investigation yeah. element of the story, but it really doesn't yeah. because there's so many different leads that you can follow. But that was also one of the problems was that we picked up or we pursued every single lead that we came across. I like to think <laughs> that we were very thorough in yes. our investigations. Yes. And your mum, if I remember correctly, got totally hung up about a hat that actually had no relevance to the story at all. Apart yeah. from it was purchased at one point, but she was adamant that it was this whole thing was about this hat. And M- mum, <laughs> mum, like ha- about halfway through the thing, just wanted to go and pin it on these people who, in the end, had nothing to do with it. So I'm just really glad that the two of us outvoted her yes. on that and yeah. overturned that decision because yeah. we actually did solve. We did solve it. We got it right. We solved the murder. However, when you do the the solving element of it it's very much like the um sherlock holmes he gathers you you know in the the parlor room and you all sit down and he'll talk through what happened and um and we need to compare it to our findings yeah um and how many how many leads did sherlock holmes do it in it said he did that in four but i think he might be lying <laughs> how many did we do it in approximately i think um I think we followed about 15 leads. I would even say slightly higher than that. But listen, <laughs> listen, right. In, in, sorry, in, in what police department are they going to be happy with someone following up four leads? Yeah, that's true. Can you imagine someone, some policeman well, sub- submitting his paperwork? And that's how they like, did things in Victorian Britain. Are you Britain? serious? <laughs> they, they did that in Victorian Britain. Detective that's Holmes, what they did. <laughs> you have followed four leads in this investigation. But he did get to that conclusion around the same time that your mum was at the conclusion about the hat. So, actually, he probably did a better job. So, what we've taken from that is next time we have to do it in as little leads as possible and not trying to make sure that we've covered every every opportunity, which I think is what we did. 
But I th- I think that's good policing. Good policing. Personally. I like that. I think I'll, that, yeah. I'll stick with that. Yeah. You should you should be you should be thorough. Don't detectives. be like Sherlock Holmes. No, he's a has been. With his cavalier attitude. <laughs> And in his cocaine habit. Exactly. Opium, I think it was. I, I think he was in everything. Everything. You don't 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 be like Sherlock Holmes. So actually horrible role model, <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Good taste in hats though. I do like a deerstalker. I do like a deerstalker. See the th- the thing about a deerstalker is like the the only people that you see wearing deerstalkers now are old, rich, mental people. That is true. That is true. So again, I think that if you go about acting like Sherlock Holmes, yes, people probably aren't going to want to spend a whole lot of time no. with you. Yeah, just yeah, don't don't be like Sherlock Holmes, kids. That's it. You heard it here. Yeah, um, we we were playing the Pokemon card game today, weren't we? Well, we I don't even what you what you would call it. We uh, managed to get our hands on the um, booster box. Yeah, this was the. Um, now infamous Ultra Prism <gasps> expansion. Da da da. Because you may, our regular listeners will maybe remember, earlier on in the year, um, someone stole. Not us. It wasn't us. Promise. Someone stole the entire supply of the for the the pre-release yeah. of the Ultra Prism expansion for the right. Pokemon trading card game. Um, and it it meant that I th- I think it was something like I think it was like eighty was it not eighty odd shops yeah it was yeah. eighty shops throughout the UK were affected by it and I, I think a few of them managed to to ship in some emergency yeah. stuff from America but um, most of the events get cancelled because of this so but, your box did you buy it off the back of a truck at the Barras? Um, I did not. Right, that's good to know. I bought it from Chaos Cards. Okay. Uh, which a are, reputable online store? A reputable online store who specialise in card games, I believe. Good. Hence good. the name. Yes. Chaos Cards. And not the back of a truck. Yeah, not the back of a truck. I don't know, I've never bought anything off the back of a truck. I can honestly say that. I have. Have you actually? <laughs> yeah, when I was younger. I think I bought a pair of jeans at the back of a truck. Was that at the... At, at like, the Barras. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I used to frequent the Barras when I was younger. That's what you did. Did you, were you, were you, one, did you frequent it or were you dragged along? I was dragged, but normally mum and dad would find something for me to do. For instance, there was the uh, game shop that would oh, sell okay. um, pirated but, yeah. editions yes. of computer games. I, I hated going to the Barras <laughs> when I was a kid. But there was one time... Yeah that my dad uh, bought for me and my sister I don't know if you remember these but it was like a, it was carved to look like a, a sort of a wooden nut right. and it was hinged and you open it up and inside was a little beetle no I don't think I remember and the wee that. legs would go no I don't think I remember them yeah I loved that um, we had we had a green one and a red one ah. each of us and we we loved these little things, and it was. I think it's to do with uh, just the way that the um, the legs were balanced yeah. on the the beetle. It would just cause them to constantly vibrate. But well, I remember one time being in this stall where they had the uh, the big list of computer games, and uh, next thing I know, we're all being hustled into the back because there's a raid, and they pulled out the shutters, and hid my family. And yeah. the other people that were in in the back and just sort of you, chatted us. Your, your to... family almost got <laughs> done for. Could you get done oh for aiding and abetting for that? Or? I don't know. I, you know what they say though, that you know everybody knew what was going on in the barras. Yeah. There was there was wasn't you know. Not exactly uh, squeaky clean. No, business no. transactions there. Yeah. But they've have you seen recently they've they've built like a big building in the middle and trying to turn it into like a sort of market space it was quite nice yeah I think I think the bar has had its day as we know it yes yeah yes you need, uh, need to adapt don't you adapt indeed but um, yeah but <laughs> <laughs> from, from the sorry from guys Pokemon to the bar <laughs> in, in one easy step and if you don't know what the bar is you need to check it you may have heard of the Barrowlands the yeah. Barrowlands Ballroom, which is the Barrows. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we will be exploring that in our uh, 
and our Tears of Glasgow by Ben and Charlotte. <laughs> the Glasgow of yesteryear. <laughs> My dad would love that. We should still do that. Get that on. He would love that. Yeah. Wouldn't he? Maybe, could, maybe we could do like a special with him. We could. We could. We'll take him round all of his all yeah. of his old haunts. Yeah. But so the we got a hold of a booster box. Yes, we for did. Ultra Prism. Totally forgot that's what we were talking about. Yeah, that's what we were talking yep. about. But, you know, very natural segue <laughs> in and out of that there. Carry but, on. Yep. Uh, we got a booster box, which is a box with 36 packs. So this, the ones you'd normally see in the shops, wouldn't you? Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. Um, and it, I th- it was on one of, one of the subreddits, because um, I was looking up uh, things that we could do with Pokemon booster packs, mm. and someone recommended um, uh, give each player eight boosters. Okay. Uh, you open them up, and then you have to try and build a deck. Right. Okay. From the the cards that you've got, uh, and that you it, it doesn't mean you have to scale the game down slight, slightly. They they do recommend that you make a forty card deck, whereas Pokemon's normally a sixty card deck. And you therefore use four prize cards instead of the normal six. Okay. Um, and uh, it, it's quite an interesting challenge because it, it you're completely restricted by what you've pulled out of the packs, um, and it, it can sometimes be quite difficult trying to suss out a, a strategy on the fly mm-hmm. with what you've got there. Okay. Um, but I mean, how how did you find it? Because well, you, you you played, didn't you? Was... Yeah, I I I really enjoyed the process. I loved seeing what cards were in it. However, for my hand, for what I drew, I had a couple of really good cards. I actually got the only rare ones, didn't I? I got two rare, the, um, the starred ones. Yeah, it's like a, there's like a unique mechanic they've brought out just for yeah. this expansion, isn't it? It's another type of card. So I had two of them. Yeah. And then all the others were like basics. Yeah. So I had a really... Well, I suppose it was balanced because I had like two really powerful guys and then lots of weedy guys. Yeah. But I managed to uh, do it. It took me a couple of turns to realise how it would play, but my deck was designed to just really waste people's time. Oh, yeah. And it that, worked. But that, that, that's a strategy, <laughs> stalling. Yeah. Back and forth, I had a lot of cards that let me um, draw from the, the discard pile to pull back supporters uh-huh. so it was very much a, a sort of just um, trying to stop you doing what you needed to do um, and I had ones that let you swap the benched you know for the active Pokemon and things like that so I really I suppose I wasn't playing to win I didn't feel like I was playing to win I felt like I was playing to make it difficult for people yeah stalling's a tactic though, yeah. but usually you're stalling to set something up. Yeah, I wasn't. I yeah. was just. But the, but those <laughs> cards that you had, it was uh, you had Luna, Lunala. Lunala, yeah. Um, who's the, the one of the legendaries from uh, the the Sun and Moon um, expansion and the Sun and Moon games. Um, from what I saw, uh, she's got a, an attack. Oh, it's ugly. It needs so ugly. What the attack? Yeah. It it needs four psychic energy, yeah. which is really specific. Yeah. It takes a long time to charge up, but then it does twenty, 20 damage yeah. for every energy in play across both players, which is insane. Yeah. So I I I played maybe five games, and I was only able to power her up the once against me against you, and I think she did about two hundred and sixty damage. Oh, it was total overkill. Yeah, but the rest of the time. She didn't even factor in, you know. I think yeah. um, Abby, your sister, was able to take her out when she was on the bench because she had a card that let her move yeah. damage around. So uh-huh. you know, and it was that way that I just, yeah, I, I wasn't playing to win. I sort of realised that from the beginning. I think, I think I really enjoyed it with that with that format the, that we played. I think although I was getting really annoyed because I I, I did struggle with it. Yeah. Um. I I I had some pretty decent Pokemon, but the problem was that um. My my two best Pokemon were stage two Pokemon, so yeah. it meant that I had to evolve them up. Whereas Josh got like two GX yeah. cards, yeah. which are the insanely powerful ones. They've got two hit points, and they've got attacks that do like two hundred damage in one hit, which is bonkers. Yeah. But they're a double edge because if you take them out, you get two prize cards for them. So uh, it still doesn't feel like much of a concession because yeah. they're they're so hard to take down just because they're so bulky. 
but um, I, I I don't think you can take that format too seriously. No, no, yeah. Um, uh, um, it, it is supposed to be predominantly fun, but I think, um, well, it, it ended up Josh won it. Yeah. Um, I mean, because he he just had the best build. And then we decided to house rule that if we were going to do it again. We wouldn't allow those cards. Yeah, because he, even Josh uh, agreed afterwards that they were completely mental. Yeah. Uh, in terms of uh, balance, and I, I think, I think it, the the booster box uh, is worked out in such a way that you're guaranteed at least two GX Pokemon. Yeah. In there, I think we ended up with three. Because you had I, Silverlight. I, I pulled Silverlight, but I couldn't yeah. use it because I didn't have the, the previous uh, stage. Type null. Yeah, Type Null. Um, but that means, like, it, if if the average is two GX Pokemon yeah. in a booster box, it means that only one or two people are going to get yeah. GX Pokemon. Yeah. Whereas Josh had both. Yeah. Having so, said that, like I said, I had the two rarest ones. That's true, yeah. but I I I think that I think um, GX Pokemon and EX Pokemon, whatever you want to call yeah. them, I think if we do that in future, we're just probably going to house rule it that. Yeah. No, that you just can't use them because it it, it just make it just skews the yeah. the balance of it too much. But um, I th- I think I w- yeah I quite like I, to do it again. It was fun. Yeah, it it was an interesting uh, interesting a frustrating <laughs> uh, for me yeah. anyway exercise. But then I said I uh, I've now lost uh, my last three games of Age of Sigmar. Yeah, you were feeling a, a bit hard done by, weren't you? Yeah, I was feeling sorry for myself. And then, I, like, I lost a bunch of games uh, of Pokemon today. So uh, I had an absolutely horrible game of Age of Sigmar last night, which consisted of Colin just blasting my army with spells. Uh, and I just, you know, just had to stand there and watch. <laughs> it, was hor- <laughs> it was horrible. So um, hopefully we, we are planning on going through to Sterling to do a big mega battle to finish off the campaign and That's style. how you you have always done yeah, your, your end we, of campaign. Yeah, we've things. we've always made yeah. a point of uh, you know trying to get through there because um, there's just something very satisfying about having hordes of little plastic dudes just out in front of you, going mad, just just all beating the crap out yeah. of each other. So we're I think we're I think we are going through for that on the eighth of April. Okay. So, if you're in Common Ground Games on the 8th of April, come and say hi. Yeah. Um, well, we've spoken about what we've been doing. What do we have planned? What exciting things are we, coming up on our, our agenda? We are going to Compulsion yep. in Edinburgh yep. just shortly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we are going to be there on the Saturday. Yes, just the Saturday. April the 14th. And, but we will be in our Unlucky Frog garb. Yes. So make sure you come and say hello. Yep, it will just be the two of us, I think. It will be Ben and Charlotte. Yep. Uh, and we will be uh, chatting yeah. to to people uh, and just generally checking out, because we've never been to Compulsion, have no, we? we have heard about it. We've never been ourselves. Yeah. Um, and uh, tomorrow, or, yep. or today, today <laughs> uh, if you're listening on the day that this goes out, yeah. you'll be going... I'm to going Edinburgh. to Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Edinburgh Playtest Group to chat to Ian McAllister, the giant brain. Is is Ian McCall- McAllister a giant brain, or is that just the name he's chosen? For I will himself? find out tomorrow. I'm expecting to go there, and he's going to look like you know Mars Attacks. No, the I was, guy with the brain. No, do you know what I was That's thinking? That's what I'm expecting. No, do you remember that bad guy in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? <gasps> of course. What was his name? Begins with an S. No, you're thinking Shredder. No, no. no, the guy that was just Yeah, the like... big guy that was the body. No, no the guy no, he was like a brain. Yeah, but oh, he was in was a big his... big pink fleshy body. I'm gonna and look his this belt up right now. His belt was the the head. I'm looking it's this shra- up. Krang. Is it Krang? I'm sure it's Krang, which doesn't begin with an S. Um I th- I believe tomorrow we're actually going to be playtesting one of Ian's games himself that he's been working on. Uh, so for those that don't know, Ian is a blogger, does a lot of reviews, um, The Giant Brain, you may have heard of him, if you haven't, go check him out, um, but he'll be there in his playtesting game design capacity, so I'm looking forward to being part of that and getting to meet the group, and we've not actually seen much of the Edinburgh gaming scene. No. 
So I'm quite excited to go through and find out more we, about we it. We don't get out there very often, no. do we? Um, well, I think that's about all we've got time yep. for this week. Um, but make sure you listen in on Wednesday. We'll be yes. talking to Ralph Horsley. Ralph Horsley. She's freelance illustrator. <gasps> uh, f- that, that's, you may know his work. That's this week's Independence yes. Day episode. And... Uh, What's he most well? So what what do we know most for? We well, he's yeah. he um, he's done the box art for Lords of so Waterdeep. Water Deep, yes. Exactly. Um, but he, he's he's done loads of work in D and D, Pathfinder, Magic: The Gathering. Uh, he's uh, he's done some work for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay right. yeah. as well. So he's one of those chaps. You maybe don't know the name, but you will definitely, definitely know the work. Recognizes his work. Yeah. So so check that out, but. Um, Until then, uh, take care, guys, and thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Hi, guys. It's uh, Josh from the Unlucky Frog Gaming Podcast here. Thanks for listening to us. And now be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Just search for the Unlucky Frog Gaming. Uh, You can also show your support for Unlucky Frog through Patreon. Be sure to check out our website, www.unluckyfrog.com, to find out more. Was that so hard? (laughs) <laughs> I'm, look.